Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Bianchi X15 shoulder holster. We'll talk about why I decided to try this holster as well as how I purchased it. Next we'll do a brief unboxing and take a look at fit both to the gun as well as to me. Then we'll move on to concealability and usability and finally we'll wrap up with my decision on whether or not to use this holster. So, I've recently purchased an SP-01 Tactical as a birthday present to myself. I've been looking for a suitable holster for the pistol. Living in the north, I find it difficult when wearing heavy coats to draw from my usual 3 o'clock position. A shoulder holster seemed a good solution to this problem. Furthermore, I don't personally feel comfortable having my handgun pointed at whoever's behind me, so I knew that a horizontal configuration was out of the question. This narrowed my options considerably, and with what remained of the vertical holsters, the X-15 seemed to be the only one that would fit my CZ. Going to the Safariland website, I used their holster finder to locate the right model for my gun. So I just entered the manufacturer, the model, and the caliber. Going to the results, I selected the X-15. Then I selected the color and draw hand. This resulted in a part number. Now I could have ordered directly from Safari Land, but notice first the long lead time. Then when we look at the price, it's obvious we should first look elsewhere. Moving on to Amazon, we find that they do have the X-15 and it is priced considerably lower. However, we don't have the sizing tool, but rather a list of nebulous sizes. We do know Safari Land's recommended model number, but that does not appear here on Amazon. Looking to Optics Planet, we find a size chart, and for my gun, a number two is recommended. Looking to the right, we see that the model number for a size two right hand draw is indeed the model number that was provided by the Safari Land tool. Ultimately, I ordered the size 2 from Amazon, and it arrived a couple days later within a padded envelope. So, looking at the label, we see that the part number is indeed the same part number that was recommended by Safari Land's uh, tool. So, let's see what we've got. So there's an insert that appears to have some instructions on the inside for care and use. The holster itself, whoop, so we have an extra retention strap. Uh, the holster itself is pre-assembled to the harness. Uh, looking at the holster body, it's uh, some pretty quality leather heavy thickness, the edges are nicely burnished and finished with some sort of lacquer it appears. Uh, looking down towards the bottom of the holster body we see that it's a double thickness of leather. The stitching is single however it does appear to be of pretty high quality and a heavy thread suitable to the task. Now if we look in the front opening of the holster, if we look at the bottom there we can just make out that there's a steel rod inserted in between the two layers of leather and that provides the tension to maintain the, whole, the pistol with inside the holster. Okay, on the back here we have what appears to be a strap to secure the muzzle end of the holster to your belt. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any sort of, no, there's no adjustment to that. It'll be interesting to see if that actually reaches my belt. Hmm. Uh, some of these snaps are directional. We can see there's a little divot on the snap, a little dent. Uh, that indicates that it's a directional snap, so it has to be snapped on there in a particular manner. Uh, 
this little card also talks about that as well. So moving up to the harness, so it looks like the primary loop for the harness is actually attached to the holster by uh, these little slots and it's woven into the slots. I would assume that's for a certain amount of adjustment. Um, it's, it's tight. It, it's not going to pull loose. But I wonder if we, let's see if we attempt to lengthen this. If it becomes too loose. We'll just go two slots and see what happens. Ah, wow, that's not good. Okay, so, yeah. I don't know if they did that for adjustment or not, but if they did, it's not a very good uh, secure method. So I think I will just leave that fully laced and not attempt to lengthen that at all. The material that this loop is made out of is a thinner, more supple leather than the holster body itself. And that's probably necessary for comfort. Seems sturdy, it has a little bit of stretch to it, but not horribly so. Um, let's get this the rest of the way in there. Okay, right. The secondary loop that goes around the, uh, the right shoulder is a heavy elastic material, pretty strong. It has a single buckle for adjustment. And yeah, so that's the holster overall. Again, there's two retention straps. Um, and each one has three snaps, so two different lengths on each one, so there's four different sizes available, depending on the firearm you have. Okay, so let's see how the, the pistol fits within the holster. Let's check fit. Okay. Um, that's pretty tight. So I'm, I'm pushing on it pretty hard and that's as far in it to the holster as it's going for now. Let's try to spread this open a little bit and see if that allows it. Yeah, there we go. So, hmm, that's a pretty tight fit and if you had to draw it, you would have a really hard time drawing the gun. Wow. I would assume that over time that this would loosen up and maybe break in for the gun, but I don't know about that. That's, I don't consider that acceptable. I really have to pull hard to get that out and to put it in the holster. It just barely goes in there. Also notice that the trigger and trigger guard are not fully covered by the holster once it's in there. Let's see if we can get one of these straps to fit. So this is the longest. And that is clearly too loose. What if we go to the next setting? It's a little better but still too loose. All right, let's try the shorter strap. Um, so, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It doesn't quite reach. Let's see if I can. Okay, I can get it to snap. 
and that's probably the size that I would go with but I'm guessing that would be fairly difficult to secure uh, with the holster on your body. I don't know that I'm happy with the way that gun fits in there. It's awfully tight. And looking at it from the open end, you can probably see that the muzzle is still a good inch away from the bottom of the holster. So there's a lot of excess there's a lot of excess holster there that doesn't really need to be there. And that's, I guess, part of it being a sort of universal holster that fits a lot of different guns. Um, and it may be intended for a lot of different guns, but it certainly does not fit this one very well. All right, well, let's try it on and see how it works on the body. Okay, so here it is on me. Um, the fit is good, the comfort is reasonable, uh, it feels a little odd underneath my arm. Uh, notice how the muzzle moves around when I move my arm, that's a little annoying. Um, and as far as the bulk underneath my arm, I would assume that would be something that I would eventually get used to. Uh, as I thought, the tie-down strap does not reach my belt. However, I tucked it under my belt just to see what that might feel like if it was secured, and it is considerably better. Uh, the muzzle doesn't move around so much when I raise my arm, so I would definitely want to go that route. Now let's take a look at what it would look like with a sports coat on. Now this sports coat is uh, fits me normally. It's not intended to go over a gun. So with it unbuttoned, you notice it conceals the gun okay, but if you look, you can tell that there's a bulge under there. Um, so I would probably have to get a larger coat, and particularly when I button it, um, now you can see that a coat that normally fits me is clearly too tight with the gun underneath there. Um, and, and the bulge is prominent. You really notice that that gun is, is under the coat. Um, so I would have to get a larger coat if I wanted to go this route. Now with a looser fitting fleece, uh, the gun conceals much more nicely. Uh, you can still tell it's there, but you'd probably have to be looking for it. Uh, if you weren't paying attention, you would never notice that it was under there. Um, it's especially noticeable from the back, though I, I seem to notice. Um, with a heavy winter coat, of course the concealability um, is much better. Uh, but even still, you still can tell that the, uh, the gun is underneath there, um, especially from behind. Uh, that thickness of the holster, it's, it's much thicker than the gun itself, and so it really becomes prominent from behind. Yeah, so comfort and fit is okay. Concealability is okay as well. Um, none of it is great. So there you have it, the Bianchi X15 shoulder holster. Will I be using it? No, definitely not. It fails in every respect. Comfort, fit, both to the gun, to the body, usability, concealability, comfort, adjustment. No matter how you look at it, this holster is simply abysmal. So it's back in its package, ready for return. So what's next for the SP-01? Well, for now at least, I've given up on the shoulder holster idea. However, I have located a more traditional option for the CZ and it's already on order. So stay tuned for further reviews. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, click the subscribe and hit the notifications. Thanks and have a great day.